Hey everybody! Today, Rado runs down Brass Lancashire, which is the latest deluxe reprinting of the modern classic Brass. And I'm going to spend a few minutes today letting you know what has changed about this new lavish production. The core game hasn't really changed at all. Brass is, as Brass always has been. There's a couple of little tweaks, but the main thing you are going to discover if you pick up Lancashire is, oh my gosh, look how pretty Brass is! The game is absolutely gorgeous now. Looks as good as the best of any modern designer Euro game that has come out to date. So full of life and detail. Uh, it's just luxurious and pulls you in and makes you want to play a stark, stark contrast to just how ugly the original Brass from 2007 was. And if you want to know, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen and go watch my run through of the original to get an idea of just how night and day different this is. Um, and it's it's not just the board art itself, but, you know, the components as well. Like, for instance, if you get the deluxe version, you get these uh, poker chips from, who is it, Iron and Clay, uh, apparently? I guess they must make really nice poker chips. I can confirm they are absolutely lovely, nice and heavy and weighty. Now, you don't get these if you get the standard edition, but even still, the cardboard money that comes with the standard edition looks absolutely great. That's nice. The cards look great. What would be my opening hand? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, eight. Let's look at this opening hand. And you can see, uh, you know, the uh, this is so much nicer than just a nondescript map. I mean, you could argue it's a little bit less functional because, hey, at least with the uh, map cards, it lets you know at a glance where it was. But these are color-coded, so they're still very easy. Here's the purple ones, here's the light blue ones, here's the dark blue ones, etc., etc. And, uh, you know, and then the actual industry cards, of course, are really popping as well. So everything about the production of just is just through the roof gorgeous. And not for nothing. These player boards are so nice. I don't know why it never occurred to me before to actually have all my stuff laid out like this so I can at a glance see all the costs. Uh, you know, I used to just kind of put them in stacks. Again, go watch my run through and then I was constantly having to double, triple check. So laying it all out, it's kind of a pain to set it up, but it does make play much smoother. And actually, since I'm talking about this, here is where the Arguably most significant change is level one cotton mills. Apparently, according to the developers, according to Martin Wallace himself, the uh, return on investment for level one cotton mills is so terrible that all players agree you should never build them and you should just develop right past them. Well, because of that, they have officially changed to now provide five victory points instead of three. Which apparently, again, according to developers, doesn't make them worth building. You're still better off developing past them to build it, start with level twos. But hey, uh, apparently there are some edge strategies if you're a real super expert at Lancaster where it might occasionally be worth building a level one cotton mill for those extra two victory points now where it never was before. So. This is the most significant change. Apparently, a couple of uh, cards have been taken from the deck to deal with some edge cage stuff as well. But otherwise, oh, and the weird virtual link between uh, Birkenhead and Liverpool is now not an official part of the rules. You just ignore that since that's what most people do anyway. Although there is in the back of the rule book a variant section that still talks about the virtual link if you want to continue playing that way. Um, so the more significant change has to do with two-player, which is weird because originally Brass was not a two-player game, but the community around Brass loved it so much that they came up with a brilliant two-player variant. And it had to do with pretty much cutting off a significant part of the board, you know, there just not being a lot of cities. Now, that variant is still here. If I were to flip this board over, you would see an alternate take that is the two-player map where all the southern stuff and some of the others are, are just completely off the map, and you play with the uh, two-player variant rules that have been around forever. And those, again, are the variant rules that I demoed in my run-through. You can hit that eye. However, by default, there are now official two-player rules that change it up a little bit. Instead of physically removing the cities from the board, the cities still remain, and as part of setup, you remove cards from the deck. Uh, if I recall correctly, I believe it's specifically the light blue and the dark blue cards. These just come out of the deck altogether. So, that has the same end result of tightening play so that you focus on you know those those uh, non-northern areas. 
And you, the interesting thing is, you can still build up here. You can still use industry cards. You just can't use city cards to build up there. So that has the same end result of tightening the board, but doing it in a more elegant way that also allows for more flexibility and freedom because maybe there will be circumstances where you do still want to build up in Lancaster. And you still can. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not like cities are gone completely. They just, certain sections of the board become more difficult to build in. And I got to say, I think on the whole, that's a really clear clever way to do it. This alternate approach for two-player is also how, what they've implemented for Brass Birmingham, and I can say it works fantastically there. But again, for the purists who don't want the original game rules to go away, what the heck, I'll just flip it and show it. Everybody out of the way! Everybody off the board! Here it is, the old two-player map. As you can see, oh, it's just a wasteland down here and over here. Uh, just fewer places to build, and then you just have kind of the uh, random luck of the deck. Uh, you know, and so it's interesting, the original one, uh, you know, there's a little bit more unpredictability by what cards get pulled out, as opposed to, you know, because you don't know exactly what as opposed to the new one where you pull out specific colors. But anyway, um, so you can have your cake and eat it too if you prefer the original. And um, let's see, about the only other thing worth talking about is again, just zooming in so you can get a sense for just how pretty, how detailed. I mean, brass never looked this good. It's Absolutely wonderful. I mean, again, one of the best heroes of all time, uh, I think, is a, a fairly common. Uh, view of it, and with good, good reason. Uh, you know, the game now looks as good as it's always played. And that, folks, is the rundown on Brass Lancashire. Uh, and there's not much more to say. Uh, again, Check out my original run-through if you want to know how Brass plays. And uh, be on the lookout. I'll be having a run-through uh, run of Brass Birmingham before too long as well. That's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a very nice day. Talk to you later. So long. Oh, bye-bye.